The other workflow that you can do as well is to degamma your inputs. And when I say inputs, images, you know, color picking and whatever. Keep it linear internally, obviously. Export the, uh, the you know the final result of the render will be in linear space, and then instead of saving it out as uh, or, 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 or applying gamma and saving it out as a JPEG or something, you keep it linear and save it out as a HDR image, and then you go into some tone mapping application like Photomatics or Artisan or even uh, Photoshop, you know, uh, and that gives you much more control um, because there's uh, you can start to bring out the darks in specific areas or tone down the light, uh, the, 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 the hot, hot spots and you, you've got much more control than just applying 2.2 gamma to everything. Uh, but even doing that can get you uh, some pretty fantastic results. Now what we've got here is what most people do and certainly was something that I did when I was unaware of this subject. So this is a simple room, all the textures have been turned off apart from the floor for a specific reason. and there is an area light outside the window just shining in and, and the backdrop itself is, is a, a kind of a, a light gradient. Um, so this has got the texture map, so that, that, that floor texture map there has got gamma applied to it already because it's just a JPEG off the internet. Um, and no gamma has been applied to the, the resulting image and that's why it looks dark. And, and you can actually see these, um, uh, you know, the way that the shadows are very, very dark and suddenly uh, the bright spots really kind of the transitions very very sharp you can see that on the on the walls and on the ceiling you can you know you can see the blend almost uh, and that's a result of this um uh, you know the the, the basically the the, uh, the way that a computer displays an image that's not had gamma applied to it so you you're, we're seeing that original curve in a way or it's being displayed using that original curve and again this might be technically suspect but what you end up with is, is this very dark image so Without changing the lighting or textures in any way, or degammering the textures, but just applying gamma at the end to this image, this is what we get, which is a massive difference in terms of um, uh, trying to light this scene, for example. Uh, I mean, the way I used to do it before was I would do a render, I would, I would get something like this, uh, and I'd be like, right, well, that's way too dark, and I would start cranking up my lights, uh, cranking up the diffuse um, setting on the textures to make them brighter, you know, adding lights in everywhere, and you, you eventually sort of back yourself into a corner, because when you start to increase your lights so much, you start to get blowouts, because obviously the light's um, quite bright where it's originating from, just to kind of fill in that back wall in this example. Uh, and so you, you start to crunch everything, all the, all the your, um, you know, sort of, uh, mid-tone shadows and highlights, all, everything gets moved around and, and, and compacted. It doesn't leave you much room for uh, maneuver. But just adding gamma at the end, um, and e not even de de uh, degammering that texture, this is what you get. And it's this huge improvement. And, you know, suddenly, um, you know, if I want to increase the lighting, I can, and, I, I, and it's not going to blow out too much. Uh, you know, I've got much more control. It's got much more freedom, much more sort of colour space to play with it, if you like. Um, but that was, as I was saying, because this texture on the floor here has already got gamma applied to it, and we're adding gamma at the end of this rendering, that that floor looks kind of washed out. Uh, and you might, you know, on some of your textures, it might actually look alright. You might want to leave it like that. And that's the thing: is there's no, it's not a uh, this gamma correction subject. It's not a law. You don't, you know, if if your image looks okay without doing this, then you, it looks okay without doing it. You know, you can leave it like that. Um, but in this example, if we wanted to bring back some of the strength and, and color of that floor, then we would need to degamma um, that uh, that texture, and that this is what we get. So you can see that the floor is now much uh, stronger than like the original texture, um, and gives it a bit more contrast. And you know, from from just two simple steps, we go from that to that, which is for very little effort is actually a lot of improvement uh, and like I say it's all down to if I skip back to that it's this workflow here so we degamma the images on the left hand side there so it renders internally in uh, linearly the output is a linear workflow uh, everything's in the linear space and then we apply gamma at the end so that this workflow here gives you that image there so I hope this uh, clears up um, 
some of the sort of technical aspects of what gamma is and and why why it's even in there in the first place and, and the benefits that you can gain from it um, because even without going too technical into the subject just doing very simple changes like this uh, can have massive improvements on, on lighting um, and, and just the, the overall look of your images and, and specifically like which is why I've used this example for lighting interiors um, you know trying to trying to get light into an interior is is, is always been a, a bit of a challenge it's certainly like I say more 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 difficult than um, straight product shots um, so yeah that's pretty much it really um, as I said it's a huge subject and this is a very simplistic uh, overview of it uh, but I hope that gives you uh, a, a, at least a starting point to start to explore this uh, this type of workflow in in your own work uh, okay I hopefully uh, uh, that was uh, useful for you. Cheers.